Josh. This is Nudes Per Second. Welcome to my channel. And I figured I'd have some fun in this video making a three cluster rocket out of stuff I have around the house. I've built some of these things in the past and I figured today let's have some fun. Let's make a cluster rocket out of it. So I'll cut to the table and show you everything I got for the project. So at a quick glance, here's everything I pretty much need. Now I've got a lot of different things. I'm not sure what I want to do. So I brought a little bit of everything. I'm using hot glue as my adhesive to put the project together. And that works very well for the low power. I haven't had an issue so far. And I've got rockets that have flown many times on hot glue. That's centerings fins, everything. So hot glue is my adhesive. Now I've got random body tubes. Here's a B, chunk of a B55 tube. This is a 24 millimeter motor mount. In this bag I've got piles of paper towel rolls which are beautiful because they are lightweight and they're easy to shape. If they're not completely round I just make a centering and straighten them out. I've got a, a roll of elastic. You get this stuff at like Join Fabrics or uh, Walmart sometimes carries this stuff. The straw for the launch lugs. This is great for the little Estes rods. I believe it fits the 1 8. I got a pack of the uh, 18 millimeter Estes motor mounts. Streamer for recovery. This is thick cardstock that I got at Michael's store. And I don't know if you can hear it, like that's, this is pretty thick stuff. I roll this into a nose cone and I'll tell you that works great. Scissors, here's the motor of choice. Um, I got these from my friend Pete so I figure we'll load three half eight motors in there. Um, utility knife, marker, um, I need to get a pencil, tape measure and here's the other crucial part is this quarter inch foam board. This stuff is great for the centerings, fins, or anything like that. And, oh, and just in case BBs, but I don't think we're going to use that in this project because these are only half A's. We got to keep this rocket as light as possible. So I'm probably just going to put that off to the side. And uh, yeah, let's get designing a rocket. Actually, they fit pretty tight. <laughs> All right, so okay, so we know these motors definitely fit inside the 18 millimeter that I have. All right, so that's good to know. I was thinking of using the rest of this tube of the B55 or BT, excuse me, BT55 from Estes. But I think I'm going to wait. I want the rocket a little bit longer because this is probably going to be bottom heavy. And the longer the rocket, the easier it is to stabilize. So I think I'm going to use one of these tubes here. So the next thing I like to do is start drawing out the fins. And I like to go with a four fin design. Something, I'm just going to stick with my basic design. You know, basically it's just kind of like one of these. Actually, it's a little too tall. Something like that. So I'm just kind of sketch it out real quick. these are all pretty much the same size. And that's going to glue on right back here. So what's nice about a fin design like this, if you're just kind of going up by the top of your head, pretty much 
I know the center pressure is always going to be right around here with these type of fins. And we can always do a swing test to make sure this rocket will stay uh, pretty stable. Alright, so next we need to get some centering going. Trace out our motor mount. Trace our other motor mount out. I like to cut out the, the center first because it makes it a lot easier where once you get this, if you cut out the centering on the outside first with the foam board, it becomes very delicate and you could have some problems. And the other thing with foam board is you could literally cut these holes a little smaller because foam board is easy to, it, it, it will form around whatever you're trying to push it into. Our glue is hot. Let's get, um, there it is. Let's start putting together the motor mount, put a bead in. There, then we'll do another one. Like that. Now push this one and we'll use this one for the motor. So we'll get something to tape on to there. And I'm going to put a fillet in. Do an inside fillet. Inside fillet. And this one. Alright, so we're going to roll a nose cone with the cardboard stock. And just get it going. Like I try to curl it just a little bit. And we want to make sure this is going to fit our airframe. So. As a roll in this, just double check that. I do form it a little bit with my hand as I'm rolling. Look at the tip here as we're rolling. Look at that, how nice that is. Okay, I'm putting a bead of glue in right here to hold this all in.
let that sit for a second while this cools off. So once this cools off, we can take the straight edge razor and trim off the edge. And the cardboard is pretty pliable, so if it's not quite round, we can shape it. So now that the nose cone is made, the motor mount to assembly is cooled off enough for, for us to work with. And I know I need to put a bead of glue here and here. So I'm going to do that now. So what you can do, with you can just kind of drop this in. Drop it in as far as you can where you think it's going to hit here and this will, just like epoxy, it'll just push in and make a fillet. So I'm just kind of just dropping a bunch of glue. Tons of glue. And this is so hot, it's going to take a while for this to cool off anyways. So I'm hitting a little bit here and I'm going all over the place down there. All right, we really need to get that in there now before that hardens up, because we'll be in trouble. All right, I'll put a little more glue here, so we push some of it out of the way. Okay, here we go. Look at that fit. That is great. And now I'm going to put a fillet in right here. Get some more glue. Woo, that is hot. <laughs> that is hot. All right, so that feels pretty good. I mean, I gave some structure down here. All right, so now we're gonna let this cool off. We're going back to the nose cone. We trim off the extra here. Cut away, <laughs> cut away from your body. So I'm just kind of shape it like you would whittle wood a little bit. Just trying to smooth off this edge just a little bit. Now the next step is to check where this is going to meet the airframe. And looks like it's going to be right about, right about here. So you want to cut this excess away. need to go down a little bit further. Let's double check. That looks pretty good. I don't mind having a little bit of an overlap. Yeah, that's going to be good. All right, now it's time for fins, and I have to be ready to put more glue in. So let's start one bead.
And the same thing, you know, you just want to be looking straight down, making sure this is good. I'm doing a four fin design because it's easy for me to, I'm pretty good at just eyeballing that. The three fin design is a little more tricky for me. All right, so now I'm making sure that this is in the same position. fillets in with hot glue I don't have a regulator on this so this gets pretty hot these are gonna wiggle around as you loosen the the glue when you apply more and so you just gotta be careful so I do a fillet see so it got wiggly again because you're loosening up everything looking good. Now while we're gluing, I want to get the launch rails on, or launch lugs, excuse me. So I'm going to put a healthy bead on here. When I make these type of nose cones, what I notice is the nose cone overlaps a little bit and the launch rail can stick on the nose cone or the, uh, the rod. So if you put a thick layer of the glue on and just have it rest on the top, it will help with that, it will um, to get around the nose cone. So next step, we do need to make one more type of centering. We need a bulk plate for the nose cone. This is going to be our attachment point for the shock cord. Okay, that's good. So we need to make a coupler. That's gonna fit inside here. in here and then I just expand out my fingers trying to get this to fit snug all right it's cooled off already put a bead on the inside of this just to strengthen it up And then on this end, uh, which end? Uh, I'll go on. This end got kind of bent up, so I'm gonna put the bulk plate here on the, the side that didn't form up quite right. And 
just push that in just a little bit so we can get a, a coupler in there or excuse me so we can get a fillet in there <laughs> and we'll put a little glue on this side reinforcing that bulk plate That looks really good. So this is going to go in the nose cone. All right, we're going to put tons of glue in here. Just in as straight as you can. And to make sure it looks right, let's push this into the rocket. And you can kind of line it up. But I think I got it pretty good. Look at it from straight on. And throw in a fillet in this way. All right, I just took a small break and make sure all this stuff was cooled off enough and hardened. Test fitting nose cone on here. Hey, look at that! Looks like a rocket. So now that I want to make this a cluster rocket, I'm thinking of just putting some outboard tubes on here and running it like that see how that works so let me get some glue on here now I'm trying to keep them all even so one there So I'm going to put in a fillet on this side, hold this motor in. I'm not going to paint this until I know how it flies. Add the nose of cone on there. And we're still nice. It's still top heavy. So I load the motors in. It should balance out. Now while that's drying, let's get our shock core going. Nose cone out. We'll put a bead. Glue right there. Get a healthy bead of glue on there. That should be more than enough to keep that shot cord in there. All right, now while that's cooling off, time to put the shock cord in here. So I'm going to put a bead of glue in. I'm going to drop the shock cord down the tube where the glue is. And I got my piece of paper that I'm going to glue used to hold it all together down there. Alright, so if I turn the camera around, so I'm just 
using that paper to help hold that shock cord in there. That should work out nice. Now we just need a streamer. Chalkboard. All right. There we go. So here's a view from the back. That's pretty cool. Let me practice loading this up. Okay, so now I'm going to load the motors in and see what the weight is going to be. See if we have to do anything more with the nose cone. One. Two. Three. <laughs> Okay, so the weight is right about here. It's balancing. So the center pressure will be right around here, so it's pretty close to being uh, one diameter off. Especially once these start lighting. All right, here we are. A three cluster motor of a paper towel roll rocket on Cobra one half A's, three of them. Three, two, one, and go. <laughs> Rocket stuck in the tree. All right, successful flight. All three motors lit. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, the rocket's up there, and I gotta go pick it out. So <laughs> that was cool. Successful flight using three fire wires for uh, igniter wires, or the e matches, they work well. All right, success, I got my rocket down with my, my pole. And here's the three fire wires hooked up. You can see each one has fired off. Here's the back end, all three motors lit. You can see the cool ejection charge. 
And after ripping this thing out of the tree, this thing is ready to go. Absolutely ready. Um, the only thing I forgot to do is put uh, wadding in there and I, I cooked some of the streamer. Actually, uh, yeah, I might have burnt in half. So besides that, successful launch. That was cool. Absolutely cool.
All right, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Blast off. Hey, that was cool. That was cool. Do you see all three motors light? I was so excited during the launch, I didn't notice that this rocket had done a flip after leaving the pad about two thirds of the way up on the flight. So going back over the slow motion, I'm like, what's the flip all about? You know, I kind of weighed this out and it seemed like it was stable or bounced it. And uh, going back on the slow motion video a few times, I noticed one of the Firewire E-matches they're pretty heavy and I attached it too well on one of the motors so when this thing's going up the wire is holding on and so this rocket's coming up actually it's I think it's grabbing on one side yeah and it's coming up and it's yanking it's yanking the rocket this way so and then it finally broke free the wire ripped through the tape but by then this is so light that it, it, it already sent the rocket to like this trajectory. So the second flight went way better. I made sure that where I attached the firewire lines, they were not taped on too well and secured to the rocket. So they were able to release on launch and we had an amazing flight. Again, all three motors lit, very happy. My neighbor was super excited to watch the flight, probably at an altitude of you know, 15 to 20 feet. <laughs> so, yeah, um, and here's a close up of what this thing looks like. All painted up. I made some decals. So, next flight, I'll probably load in three full A motors or load in with B's, take out the streamer, put in a 12 to 18 inch parachute, and that should be a pretty exciting flight. Again, this was a lot of fun. I haven't done a clustered rocket in a very long time. The main goal of this project was just keeping things fun. It was very refreshing just to gather some things around the house, paper towel rolls, cardboard, whatnot, put it together, fly it, you know, you can color it, decal it, however you want. And then on the other side of the hobby, you got your bigger bills. They're serious, time, energy, big money in some of these things and or you know to stop and pause and enjoy something like this for a change and it was very refreshing to do something like this fun my neighbor had a good time watching it being launched so this wraps up the video of I'm gonna call it the ultimate paper towel roll rocket cluster rocket thanks for watching everybody and have a great day